to Go Lurk Yourself, a podcast about streaming on the internet. My name is Crunky. I'm Snuffus. Today we're going to talk about the Grape Shots games developed Atlas for PC and is it on consoles as well? I don't think it is yet. Oh God, I hope not. No. <laughs> <laughs> you guys may know uh, Grape Shot Games is the devs behind uh, such awesome adventure games as Ark uh, combat evolved no not combat that's, yeah. that's halo arc uh, <laughs> survival evolved, survival evolved yeah yeah and basically atlas is is advertised as a pirate mmo atlas is an upcoming pirate mmo adventure game from grape shot games build customize and sell your own ships with a crew of other players team up or fight with other ships and crew uh, fight skeleton pirates and uncover buried treasure that is the about on the Atlas wiki. Uh, however, you may hear uh, from your friends and other people on Twitch as it's that bullshit game that's not at all a pirate game. <laughs> <laughs> and they wouldn't be terribly wrong by saying that, honestly. Yeah, so so Atlas, a lot of people have come out and said Atlas is basically a reskinned arc with um, a lot of the same like f- game files uh, mm-hmm. and assets being renamed. And... And you know, I, I get it. You know, the the, the company needs to, a grape shot has has this art game. It's been a mild success. They've yep. they've supported it for a few years, but they needed that big sales bump. And Atlas, I think, at its core, does some very interesting and new things. Mm-hmm. However, it's an early access game on Steam, and like a lot of early access games, it's missing some um, polish. I think that that people might expect they. Yep. They, they were really uh, kind and reached out to people like Snuffus and me and said, hey, we'll give you a free key if you guarantee to stream it for so long. Did you get a key through, through yes. uh, one of these places? Yeah. Yes, I sure did. Yep. So I, I commend them for, for trying to like um, grow their brand uh, organically and, and spread through word of mouth. And, and I think that made me a little bit more lenient on the game than I would have been if I would have paid 20 bucks for it. Yeah, 100%. Uh, yeah, so so before we get into the weeds here too much, I want everyone here to know that both Snuffus and I both got a free copy of the game, um, but we're not going to be gentle on it by any means. <laughs> Absolutely. I will give me you, you my 100 honest opinion. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I tell a lot of people that ask me, they said, you know, you, I see you play a lot of Atlas recently. What do you think of it? I preface everything, every conversation I ever have about Atlas. I tell them, listen, it's a janky piece of shit right now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's a fun janky piece of shit. Yeah, the the thing that got me interested in it was the first two times I tried to play it on stream were atrocious. The first day they had server launch issues. They like we should have known. Like when when the game came out, they're like, "Hey everybody, this Friday or whatever day it was, we're going to have Atlas come out and it's going to be great." Everyone planned on it and they're like at like 5 minutes until they're like, "Uh, we're not ready. We're going to yeah. postpone well, this." Oh, well, sorry guys. We're going to bump it back 7 days. It was it December 22nd, the original day it was supposed to come out. It was earlier than that, I believe. I think it was supposed to come out December, let me see. I can tell you the exact date cuz I was gone. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. You were traveling because you were yeah. all upset about it. Uh, the December 20th. December 20th or December 19th. Uh, and then they bumped it back to the 22nd. And then they bumped it back to like the 24th. And then they bumped it back to the 29th or 30th. So they, <laughs> they bumped the early access release, release date back, you know, three or four times before it actually came out to the public. So the first day I tried to play it was uh, cannot connect to server, or if you did, you'd be in for five minutes and the game would crash and it would run like crap because everybody was trying to log in. Uh, I played a lot of MMOs in the late 90s, early 2000s. I'm used to a big game having a lot of launch issues, and, and that's just part of the territory with a massive multiplayer online game. Um, however, I've not played a lot of survival games, and that's what – this game really turned me off because I hate having to micromanage your, your nutrients, your, your heat, your, your hunger. I think all that's a little re- stupid in a game. However, I played this game long enough to realize once, once the servers were stable, once the game would run for more than five minutes, not crashing and you built your ship and you got out on the ocean. I'm like, okay, now I'm starting to see where the potential of this game can be. Um, it still does a lot of design things. Like I- I'm going to start, I'm going to like dummy this down a little bit because I, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm speaking to people who haven't played any game like this before. Like I was before I played it. This is a game like 
Minecraft where they drop you in a world and you literally have to like punch trees or pick up rocks and make weapons and, and tools to harvest materials better. Once you do that for a while, the whole time, everything you do, discovering things, building things, you're getting XP. That XP can unlock skills in menus that will give you access to learn like how to how to make better weapons, how to go from stone or wood to stone, from yep. stone to metal. Yep. and Armor, build the ships, you know, all, yeah. all, that, all that stuff. And there's a couple of NPCs in the starting town. And I say starting town. This is the big, some of the biggest stuff in this game really bothered me was they would let you just start the game in a really high level area where everything would kill you as soon as you spawn. And I think that's, uh, that's what turned me off originally. Mm-hmm. I think that turned off a lot of people. They have it now where you can only spawn in at free ports, which is how it should have been. A f- yeah. Free po- if you've ever played an MMO, a free port is basically like, the newbie area where nothing yeah. can kill you and then you can get your feet underneath you. When, when I first played the game, I'm like, well, I don't want to go to the free port. That's where everyone's going. And the, the server stability was such that the free port, free ports were crashing regularly. So I went to a lawless zone with level 19 crocodiles everywhere that would eat me as soon as I spawned. Mm-hmm. That was not fun. <laughs> no, was it wasn't. Fun. No, I'm a level 21 now and I still have trouble with some of the crocodiles and the, and the snakes and stuff. And, you know, I, I've played this game for almost 50 hours now. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in a couple I, of weeks. Yeah, and I, I think that's that's where that's where I, I know I got turned off, and I think a lot of people got turned off was what you went over the connection issues that that really made me mad. But I understand it's a it's a large MMO, but the fact that I didn't know what I was supposed to do, and they don't give you a tutorial at all. Yeah, I want to stress this game is in early access. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of like quality of life problems with it. Um, like stuff has just said, they don't explain to you a lot of things. Like I literally died of dehydration the first couple of times I played because the, in order to get water, you have to run around to an, an area of the land where there's green grass. You have to lay down prone by pushing X and then hold left click on the mouse. Mm hmm. Someone in general chat told me that after like my third death. And I'm like, it, when you spawn, it says you're dehydrated. You need water. And there's an arrow that says water this way. Well, I went that way and got killed by monsters and never even found any water. In fact, I played this game for 20 hours before I saw fresh water anywhere. And this is a pirate MMO game. I think was it, it might have been Snuffus or maybe, um, college who couldn't be here with us tonight. College of Celiac, another Twitch streamer that we hang out with and played this with a lot. Said they should have started you with a boat. Uh, yeah, that yeah, a hundred percent. And I, and they figured, you said that they figured that out later on because they do. They don't necessarily start you out with a boat, but in the free ports, they give you the option to hey, collect just this stuff and you know, a small you can, amount of stuff. Yeah. yeah, and you can build a starter boat here at the free port, which I think is is fan- that that's way better than what it was because when this first came out and you first did it. All you could build was a raft, and you'd sell off, sail off to God knows where as a low level, land on an island, and get killed either you know <laughs> by people that were there or animals that were there. Exactly, because the, the game. Well, here here are the things: the the long term success of this game. I think they've they've done a good job of building like this foundation, and they're going to polish it up before it goes out of early access, and who knows how long that's going to be, but. Basically, the world is massive. Like yeah. we've we've sailed for hours in in a in a single direction and never even saw half the map. So it, th- I think there's a great sense of exploration in the game. And like w- when we first we first made it out of uh, the Freeport and we're sailing on a raft in in a direction, that's when the game really clicked for me. It's like mm. okay, there's treasure chests here. There's an island here with a bunch of NPCs on it and a giant castle. I'm like, well, what's in there? Mm-hmm. And that's the first time since maybe like wow days that I've been like, ooh, I'm really intrigued by this. I want to go see what's in there. I want to go explore that island. I want to go see what's in the treasure chest. You know, is it just additional skills or is are there, are there NPC fights? Because the combat in the game isn't great, but – if they put high level fights in there that are kind of interesting, that would be something to work for. Yep. And it's that mystique of just sailing around and discovering and going through the unknown and, and searching through stuff that you've never seen before. And I, I think the map being so big and, and so unique, every little area being different, it lends itself to, you know, being explored for hours and hours and hours and never even really scratching the surface of, of everything there is to do in the game. Yeah, they, they said on their wiki that the, 
There are 700 unique land masses that are across 45,000 square kilometers, uh, with thousands of discovery zones and 10 distinct world regions, each having their own unique resources, creatures, secrets, and environmental hazards. (laughs) And I will say this, they're building system is very complex it's well thought out it's versatile like you have to you can't just build a sh- like stuff has said in your free port they'll let you build a starter raft or maybe now what is that called a ramshackle sloop yeah ramshackle sloop or a raft those are the only two things you can buy or build at the free port yeah really low level stuff but if you find your own land and and colonize it or claim it claim you can it, build yep. You can build, uh, you know, a shipyard. You yep. can make big galleons capable of transporting hundreds of crew mm-hmm. or massive amounts of cargo. You get to name your ship. You get to paint it, sell, uh, dress it up however you like. So there's a lot of like, if you think Minecraft, but with, with shipbuilding in it, it's kind of the way I look at it. Mm-hmm. Um, or, or Ark, if you played Ark. I've never played yeah. Ark. I, it, I, I, it's all, it's Ark 2.0 with a pirate skin on it. Is that uh, what it is? Okay. Yeah, which which isn't isn't bad. I, I I liked Ark. It was okay. It wasn't a fantastic game in my opinion, but I enjoyed playing it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what that's what a lot of people have said. If you enjoyed Ark, you will enjoy this game. You'll enjoy Atlas, and you know it's a lot of the uh, a lot of the systems to drink, a lot of the ways skill levels you build up and do stuff, a lot of the stuff you have to combine to make different things. It's pulled heavily from Ark. Okay. Yep. Cause you can have like a big crew of, of people. You can join with these like alliances, mm-hmm. make your ship, put cannons on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. you can have yep. swivel guns, siege engines, turrets, and even giant mortars. Um, and there's, there's NPC, um, enemy boats, like, uh, army of the damned boats with like skeleton crews on it. Yes. We've seen yep. several of them. They have different color codes for the different kind of damage they can do. They will rip you up. <laughs> they, yeah, are, they will. They are no joke, man. Those things are those things are no joke. Well, have you have you built a cannon yet in your game? Stuff? No, I haven't. Uh, I uh, I'm allies with some guys who have some cannons put up around the island we're on, and I've used their cannons. Uh, but I haven't built a cannon yet. I'm I'm working on right tonight. Actually, I'm working on getting uh, my shipyard built. So once I get my shipyard built, then I'm going to work towards uh, building a sloop. And then once I get a sloop, I think I'll be able to put a couple cannons on the sloop. Because one thing we haven't mentioned yet is there's two types of servers. There's a regular server, there's a PVE and a mm-hmm. PVP server. Yes. Um, and when you build something on an island, as soon as you build it, it starts being, it starts de- deteriorating. Yes. Yeah. You have to, you have to like keep it up, so to speak. And if you put on a PVP server, you can literally fight other players for their boats, which is, could be amazing. It could be a great experience or it could be super aggravating because you're a newbie, you just got your first boat made, and some giant ship comes along and is like, eh, get out of here, flicks it, you in, you're dead. In this game, I think you have to, at least in, in what where we're at now with this game, you have to align yourself with a larger company. You're yeah. not going to be able to come in with a company of, of five to eight people and survive on your own. You, you're going to have to, you know, go out there, make friends, talk to people, you know, it's not going to be one of those isolationist video games where you're just on your own little island and you're harvesting and making and stuff. Uh, if you do that, somebody's going to come by and just wreck your stuff with a gigantic <laughs> galleon or something. So right. a lot of cooperation is, is needed in the PvP server. I can't speak for the PvE server. I've never played it. Um, but PvP for sure, you need to have a lot of interaction with different companies and figure out who you want to align with and stuff. So when you first get in the game, you make a like like most of MMOs, you make a character creator, yep. right? Yeah. And and you could, I mean, you could make some ridiculously, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, like just when, when I was re- getting frustrated on my first stream, I died. I'm like, you know what? Let's make a new character. And I made like the biggest, tallest, fattest dude, or the the guy, the girl with the giantest butt I could make just for the <laughs> just to be something entertaining. The stream right, people were like, right. this game looks like crap. And my first impression of this game was, well, I'm glad I got this for free because if I had to pay 20 bucks for it, I'd be refunding it right now. Yeah. Uh, and, and while they did take a little bit of a punch to the face, Atlas did launching, I think people are starting to come around to it. They're starting to see that there's actually some, there's an actual game to be had out of this. Um, they say the character create uh, progression system includes more than 15 dis- disciplines. 300 skills and a vast unlockable tree, which I can tell you it's very fat, very vast. Yes. Yeah. Um, the very feat intricate. system. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. There's a feat system like F E A T mm-hmm. F E A T that yeah. allows for active and passive bindable character abilities. While the stat buff system allows 
innumerable abstract statistics to be modified, skills, items, and armor. Everything, including structures, has scalable stats, can be progressed and upgraded. You've ran into more than this than I have. Yeah, so I have um, I'm level 20 or 21, I think, and you can get different stats. Like I have uh, two different passive buffs that give me uh, increased damage when I'm shooting a bow and arrow. Oh, wow. And then it also gives me increased damage when I'm shooting a bow and arrow and the enemy has armor on. It'll give me increased damage. Uh, and then I also have another passive buff that allows for you can tame animals in this game like you could arc and ride them. Mm-hmm. Um, I also have a passive buff that when I'm riding an animal and it's attacking another animal, my animal's attack gets a buff. So it, it gets bumped up a little bit. Um, so yeah, the, the buffs are, the buffs are neat. That's a, a kind of neat, uh, thing. You know, you, you start on one skill level and you build those buffs up and you kind of just want to keep going and keep going and keep going. Uh, like me, I have, I have a couple buffs on bow and arrow, so that's my primary weapon all the time. I can just do so much damage with that because of the buffs. Yeah. If you play this game, I would highly recommend going that way first to f- deal with the aggro from the, the character, the animals and stuff. Yep. Yeah. It's, uh, that, and that's, one of the things, the aggro with the animals, I think, is the biggest complaint right now from mm-hmm. the community is it the, the the spawns for the animals are just so constant, and it it's just a little too much, in my opinion. And they literally corpse camp you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you die, and they're like, they'll just sit on your, like, you, you go there on a boat, and they'll just eat your boat when you're dead. It's mm-hmm. like, come on. Uh, they, they say there's a full quest and waypoint system with subquest rewards for major goals, procedural treasure maps, which I have run into those, mm-hmm. and challenge zones. And sure, there's always something new to find over the horizon. So for the first time, I was like, oh, there's something really cool here. We were we were college and I. I think it was the, it was the night before the, the bunch of us played all at once. Mm-hmm. Um, we were sailing through the seas and we found like a purple glowing treasure map. Oh yeah, uh, and, a, and a treasure chest floating in the ocean. Yeah, floating in the sea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I didn't realize until I played this game that I've got a little bit of like deep sea ocean monster phobia. Oh no. So like in the game, I jumped off the raft and I'm like picking it up and they're like, college is like, hurry up and get back in. There's a, there's a couple sharks underneath you. I'm like, what? I start like having a panic. <laughs> and it has that like old half life too, where you have to like swim at the top of the water a bit to jump out. And it's like, it's not, it's, it's not automatic. Yeah. Yeah, that that's one of the jankiest parts uh, of the game is is transitioning from water to land. Mm-hmm. So yeah, if you're swimming, you're going to pick up one of those treasure chests. It's floating. If you get too close, sometimes you like jump out of the water and jump on top of it. And, you know, you're trying to open it. You're trying to transfer everything over to your inventory. You're trying to swim back to your boat, all while six sharks are swimming swimming around you. <laughs> so it's it's a little it's a little nerve wracking, um, especially when. You just have one player. It's just you on the boat. You're trying to stop the boat, jump out, get all the loot, come back to the boat, get on the ladder, get back to the ship. And, and all these processes through that, you know, 15 second span, almost all of it is super janky. And it's, it's so stressful because if you die in the ocean, whatever's on your body, you're not going back to loot that because your body's going to be at the bottom of the ocean surrounded by eight sharks. And, and that's one of the things that I think you, you hit, on, hit on the head right there. When you play this game, you're going to die. Oh, you're going to yeah. die and you're going to lose stuff. Um, I've not played a character so long that he actually dies of old age. Have you had that? Have you had that happen yet? Not yet. My guy's forty eight, I believe, right now. <laughs> so, do you know what happens when your character dies to all your skills and gear? Do you have to like leave it in a guild bank or something? Uh, I have no idea. Yeah, I, I would assume all your skills you have to you have to respec everything. Right. I, I've I've read there's like a like you can have a progenitor or like a, you can have like a. A, a child, an offspring who carries over some traits oh, okay. from your main character, but I don't know. Um, we, you know, the early access, if the stuff's even in the game, it may not even work. Um, but there, we, we kind of, we made a joke. Uh, Snuffus and I and Dama and Gorby and College and who else joined us that day? D was on, Sin was D, on. D so and Sin played. Yeah. Yep. We, we said, Hey, you know what? We all have a copy of the game. Some people bought it. Some people already had it. Let's, Let's embrace the jank and just see what we kind of fun we can get out of it. And we had a pretty good time for most of the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, we had some snow here uh, where where D and I live, so we we lost internet connection for a few hours. But uh, I had a D is not a fan of this game. She never got <laughs> over the hump. I, I told her I said there, there's a time where you'll get it. It'll click with you. But you didn't have a fair enough. I mean, she didn't play it till that day, and we only played it for what three or four hours. She only played it for two or three hours before we crashed. Yeah, yeah. But that yeah, we, was our internet provider, not the game. 
yeah, we played it for uh, we played it for four or five hours that day. I think. Yeah, I, I think that day for me is when it really clicked. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I played a good amount beforehand, but it wasn't something that I was like grinding. I would just hop on a boat and like just sail around and see different islands and run around and do stuff. I wasn't really caring about progression. But we we got on that day and we got everybody was on. We had like three ships. We were all sailing around. We met another crew. We allied with the crew, and they were like, "You can put up your base here." And I'm like, I'm like, okay, like I'm finally like seeing what this game was all about, and, and why a lot of people are so enthralled with it. Um, and actually, the base. I don't know if you were still on when we met that crew and, and set up our base and everything. I got on later. Well, my internet was down for a few hours, and I got on um, for about an hour. Like I think I was on maybe just in time for everybody to get to log off. But uh, I went and found the base where you guys were at and started building stuff. So I saw it, but I wasn't able to like be there for staking a claim and building. So I got a, I got a little house there now. I have a Smith station. I have a loom. I have a mortal and pestle, and that's where I'm putting uh, the um, the shipping yard. I'm putting it right there, kind of where the mm-hmm. uh, waterfall was. Um, and it's it, it's it's neat. Every time I log on, it, it, it's a different experience. Something different happens. Um, for instance, uh, Mon was today Wednesday. So yeah, Monday I logged on uh, to the guys talking about um, that we were getting attacked, and they destroyed my boat. They destroyed my bed, so I had to spawn back at the Freeport. Uh, and they were like, we're getting attacked on, you know, the west side of the island. So I quickly gather up all the supplies, build a little ran- uh, little sloop, and I sail it, and I sail it over, and I get there, and I sail it right into the guy's galleon. I mean, just, <laughs> just full speed ran into it. Kamikaze yeah, ran into it, yeah. Just, just destru- my, my sloop was torn to bits. It sunk in a matter of 30 seconds. Uh, but it did enough damage to his galleon that he sailed away. That you know that group of people had to sail away and regroup and everything. Mm-hmm. And it, it's just small little interactions like that. It's something different that seems to happen every time I log on. That, that really gets me hooked. It's funny because I when I played that night with college, college was like, "You should let's play it." I'm like, "Yeah, I want I want to try it out." I played a couple nights by myself to kind of get comfortable with the controls and what I was doing. And then college was like, "Oh, you're playing. Let's give it a try again." I said, "Okay." And that's when we kind of like first time I got out on the water and did all kinds of stuff with him. And um, and I was thinking about you because I know how much you love pirates and Sea of Thieves mm-hmm. and those things. And I'm like, okay, this is kind of a it's a it's a sailing boat, uh, you know, pirate game. But there's actually like longer term things you can do in it. Oh, big time, big time. Work on your skills, build up your base. The the my main beef with Sea of Thieves was it's a beautiful game. But all the long-term stuff, the achievements, I mean, were all cosmetic. Mm-hmm. And like, the, 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 if, we, if it was like World of Warcraft where there was like a pirating skill or a, a, a digging skill or a gun skill that you could like work up as you went, I would be all for it. But Sea of Thieves is like, this is it. Yeah, this, this is, is this in-game. Is this is all you have. Yeah, you, you can pl- you can be just like this uh, after 100 hours, but look a little different. I was yep. like, eh. That, and, and I sh- like the the purest of me was thinking that should be all you need. The gameplay should be enough. And guess what? It's not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've always said you if you don't like if, if you didn't like the beta for Sea of Thieves, you won't like the game because they didn't change much. And I think Atlas is going to be the. I think it's going to be the complete opposite of that. Maybe, maybe not the beta, but if you played day one and didn't like it. If you come back and play it now, what are we? Maybe two and a half weeks after launch. Yeah, it, two, it's three all, weeks. It's almost a different game. It is, and and like I think you may have said this before. If you start out and you've never played a survival game before, you're going to get caught up in like, wait, what do I have to do? I have to get, I have to get these skills, and I have to get wood, and yep. I have to get stone. And, and there's no tutorial and, for it either. I think that's the worst part yeah. about it. I think people who played Atlas were both at an advantage and also at a disadvantage because they judge it like, this is just Atlas. Mm-hmm. Or, or not Atlas. Uh, 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 Ark. Ark. Yep. This is just Ark again um, because they didn't get to see the pirate stuff and they didn't get to get past some of the bugs that were uh, to, to start out. But that said, the game was covered and riddled with bugs. Like, oh, I for think- sure. I think in three months, this game is going to be like, like, like three weeks is a completely different game. I think in three months, it's going to be a much better game when they start putting a little poly, if and when they start putting a little polished stuff in there, like helping explain how the game works up front, uh, save some of the frustration. It'll be huge. 
there's a classic uh, example of gaming where in Super Mario Brothers. Have you played the original Super Mario Brothers one? Yes. For NES. Yeah. So there's a hundred YouTube videos about why it's a masterclass in game design because in the eight bit era they didn't have uh, a way to be have like this amazing intro level tutorial. So what they did was they used the environment to teach you things. The reason that little Goomba is right there on the same level as you is that if you just run to the right, you're going to hit him and die, and you're going to learn a quick lesson. <laughs> and then when you learn you jump, when you can jump, like they literally, one of the only, if you jump and hit that question block, the mushroom goes to the right, it falls down, and it's really hard to not get that mushroom. Mm-hmm. So even if you're trying to avoid it, you're going to jump on it by accident, mm-hmm. and you're going to grow into it. You're going to get the the reward of oh, the good noise of me turning into Super Mario. Right, right. Those two things are like we take for granted because we grew up with it, right? Right. But they're like masterclass, subtle ways to teach the user something. Atlas has like the opposite of that. It has things that go out of its way to kill you <laughs> yeah. and, and hide information. Like there's all these – like the way it was like, – I haven't played it in a few days. But the way – last time I played it, there were like – there's text popping up on the screen everywhere, but what you need. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> like, yeah. All yeah. this chat showing up and the, the font is horrendous and it's like terrible. Th- there's all these uh, icons that are like status buffs and debuffs that are happening to you, but they don't t- say what they mean, what they are unless you hold like a certain key combination yep. down. Yeah. You have, so you have all the, all your vitals are on the bottom right of the screen. And once you get used and know what they mean, it, it's not that bad, but I mean, it's taken me, I, like I said, I'm almost at 50 hours. It probably took me 20 hours to figure out what all these buffs and all these symbols and everything meant and how to get rid of them. <laughs> and then, yeah, like you said, you have chat over on the left side and it's just, it's a weird transparent color and stuff. And then behind chat, you have, so like, say you're sailing when somebody's chatting. Well, you have permanent tips up on the top left of your screen for sailing, which is over your chat, which is already a bad interface overlay and, and it's in the way of what you're trying to look at yeah <laughs> and then you also have all the the icons down at the bottom right and stuff happens and you have no idea what the hell it means and that chat auto hides every now and again but it will pop up and take over 30 percent of your screen yeah and i'm like i don't want to look at that right now especially uh, and this is really horrendous there's not a bad word filter on no, their chat on their no, on their not. on their region-wide chat yep. so Snuffus and I were playing, what, was it Saturday? Yes. And there's, like, racial shit going on yeah. in there. And I'm like, really? They, they couldn't they couldn't block out – they couldn't have a, a code that says, hey, if someone writes these letters together, maybe not yeah, let that Don't, get don't, don't let it go through. Uh, Star it out. And, and you know, when the, fir- when the game first launched, there was no option – to turn the chat off. It was on 24 <laughs> seven. There was no, there was no like auto hide. If not in use or something, the chat box was there 24 seven, the entire time you played. Um, so that, that kind of goes back to what I was saying. The progression of this game over just two and a half weeks has been, it's right. been pretty astounding. Um, there's still a long way to go, but it's, which, which all goes to tell me that somebody, Somebody in the dollars and cents department at the at the game publisher was like, "No, we're putting this game out now. I yeah. don't care if you guys tell me it's not ready because it clearly needed a couple more months and of cooking." I, I kind of thought that too when they pushed the the delivery date or you know the release date back you know, three or four times. I was thinking, I was like, "This game is already an early release. Like, just release it. Like, we know there's going to be bugs. We know it's going to be janky. Like every early release <laughs> game is that way." But what was so game breaking that you couldn't release it three times in a row? Like, what did you overlook? Well, and, and judging by the first twenty four hours of its actual release, we now know what it was. Yeah. It couldn't run. It, couldn't it literally run. would. It would crash. And and you know what? I I think it's this is a good look for gamers, game publishers, game developers um, to understand that. You know, especially in a, in a market like we have in 2019 or 2018 when this actually was released in early access, you don't have a whole lot of time to make, to make a good first impression. No, and, no, you don't. And I put, like, I, I'm usually one that if, if I have a really bad first experience, I won't come back to it. Um, our last episode was about Dark Souls, and this is a game that I had a terrible first impression of, and <laughs> I end up loving it. So that was in the back of my mind when I was like, okay, Atlas is an MMO. It's a different animal than a normal first person or a first party, you know, single player game. I'll, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt and I'll try it again. And mm-hmm. I did. And I had a little bit more fun the next time. Yep. The third time I had a little bit 
more fun. And I still had some frustrating moments. Don't get me wrong, but like about the fifth time I played it, I was like, okay, I, this is starting to click. I get that there's potential here, but I don't know about you, but I, there's so many options out there to game right now. Do you really have time? I'm not going to pay money to play a game that might have potential someday. It's like, what have, what have you done yeah. for me lately? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I agree. I, I see where you're coming from. Uh, for me, kind of that epiphany moment happened. I remember one night I was playing and I just got, I just got frustrated. I couldn't do anything right. I couldn't survive long enough to do anything cool. Um, so I, I turned it off and went to sleep. I, I unsubscribed from the subreddit on Reddit. I was like, fuck that. I was like, I'm done. I'm done with this. I was like, this game sucks. Oh, I didn't know it was serious. You unsubbed from a subreddit. It's like oh, unfriending crap. somebody on Facebook. Unsub. I was like, We're I, through. I fucking hate this. And I, I was laying in bed. I was about to go to sleep. And I was like, you know what? I said, I remember when PUBG came out. And I remember how much of a hot piece of garbage that was when that released. And I've pumped, you know almost 300 hours into that game and i've enjoyed it really yeah and i've enjoyed wow. you know almost every single minute of, of that game i've played you know it's turned mm. into a, a really good game and I, I i was laying in bed and i was like just just stick with it and stick with it keep playing it they're going to keep patching it you know i thought to myself if they don't patch it if we don't see any updates if the devs say screw you guys then i'll then i'll stop playing it but I, i'm glad that i didn't because the devs have been really good with the patches i mean we're on patch uh like 11.8 now and it released around like patch five oh, so wow. i mean they've done a lot a of couple patches. weeks yeah yeah i mean they fixed a bunch of stuff they fixed I, I don't know if you ever got on when they had the uh the sloop exploding when you changed <laughs> server tiles <laughs> no I, um in fact i saw you guys talking about that i'm like i'm not logging yeah. in today because that is like a, a career ending thing <sighs> that would happen to me if i spent five hours getting ready and i got my boat out and the first thing that happened was it blew up i'd be like yep. screw this game so we hopped it was college and i uh mm -hmm. we we free port island it was one of the first days they released the uh the scuttle sloop doodad at the freeport that you could build. So we get on, we do all of our stuff, we level up, we get all of our supplies, we're all we're good to go, man. We're we're good to sail. We're gonna sail for a few hours, just go look around and stuff. We're sailing, we get out of the freeport server, we go over to the next server, our boat explodes. <laughs> and, and then you're left to just die. We're, we're just we're just floating in the middle of the ocean. You know, there's no there's no island close, there's no boat, there's nothing. And I'm like, that's that's weird. That's so odd. So college got off. I got back on and I was like, I'm just going to test it out one more time. I do everything. You know, it's about an hour. I get all my stuff together. I'm sailing. I'm sailing. Crossover servers explodes. And I was just like, <laughs> oh my God. So here, here's a little, little uh, bonus clip or info about me. I've uninstalled and reinstalled this hundred gigabyte game twice. <laughs> I was like, I said, I'm done. Uninstall. I did it on stream. I like uninstalled. I showed people me uninstalling it. And then like 24 hours would pass. I'm like, well, that was some fun. Yeah, had a little I'll, bit of fun with it. I'll, I'll redownload it. <laughs> oh, who cares? So there's intense action in this game. Period appropriate weaponry with skill-based active reload systems for flintlock pistols, muskets, blunderbuss, and more. Just make sure you keep your gunpowder dry. Have you seen a gun yet? No. I, well, I take that back. Yes, I have seen a gun. No, I've never shot one. Okay, so yeah. somebody like in a in a guild or something had one. Our, our so the the companies that we're allied with, they have you know they're all like level forty something, whatever the max level is. They're all maxed oh, wow. out. They all have guns, galleons, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I've seen them shoot guns and everything, and I've had cannons shot at me. But no, I've never shot a gun, and I've never what? shot my own cannon. I haven't built a cannon. Actually, shot my cannon yet. I think it's important to note too that like you can build not just ships, but you can build like bases, and castles, mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff. Like uh, you, you could claim territory and like taxation, uh, have tax of uh, on people yeah. who who come to your place. So like there's a there's a really big you know Sim City kind of aspect to it. Um, there's tons of critters in this game. Uh, oh, we've God, talked about the one, the snakes and the, the giant kill you, snakes but. and the alligators and the sharks and the whales and the turtles. There's horses, there's elephants, there's rhinos. There's I sheep. saw a dude riding a wolf. There's plenty of wolves in this game, too. Oh, Jesus. Don't even, <laughs> I don't, I don't even talk about the wolves. The, <laughs> so the wolves are bad. The worst I've come across is the freaking rattlesnakes. 
Yeah, because they poison you. And they're so small. The giant snakes, yeah. at least you can hear them. You can, you can see them. <laughs> they don't move terribly fast. The rattlesnakes, you can't hear them or see them until they've bitten you in your ass and you're, you know, you're passed out with poison. Yeah, and then you just get to lay there poisoned and die to whatever the elements. But yep. I, I do like that there's uh, killer dolphins in the ocean too. Yeah, yeah, and killer there's dolphins. also there's also something with dolphins. I don't I don't know what it is yet. I, ha- I haven't really looked into it. But something about if you're swimming with dolphins, you get an enhanced sense of intelligence. Okay, um, I don't know what that does, but I, I hopped out to get a crate the other day, and there were a couple dolphins around me, and I noticed they were glowing, and then I noticed the little symbol in the bottom right had uh, a passive buff or something, yeah, like a brain buff. So I, I don't know what it is or what you can do with it, but I was I was smalda. So, <laughs> so I think that goes to show you that what Atlas gives you, aside from countless bugs and things that hopefully they will iron out in early access, <laughs> is there's a sense of wonder to the game that I have not ex- – I mean, I'm a grown-ass man, okay? I'm in my 40s. I've played a lot of video games. It's been a long time since a game gave me a sense of wonder. You remember that first time you step out of the newbie zone in World of Warcraft and you're like – Oh my God, this place is massive. Mm-hmm. And think about, I wonder what's over that hill. Yep. That's what this game has done to me, for me in a way that I didn't expect. I, I thought, eh, I'll try it. Why not? Let's see. Yeah. We'll see what kind of game it is. And my first several hours of this game were, Oh my God, unmitigated rage. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and I, go ahead. I, I would just, I would tell people, like, like you said, if you get on and play an hour and a half, two hours, three hours of it, and you rage, just stick with it. And if you can, find someone who has 50 hours in the game. Find yeah. someone who has, who has a little bit more knowledge in the game. Knowing how to play this game makes it so much more enjoyable. Or, or do what I did after what I should have done before I played the first time. Go on YouTube and find out what you need to know for the first five hours yes, of Atlas. Yeah. Um, because that will take pl- the place of the tutorial that doesn't exist yet. <laughs> it, it's January 16th when we're recording this. If you're playing the, if you're going to play it anytime in the next week or two, do that and you'll be, wo- you'll, you'll get to experience the good parts without experiencing the m- maddening, frustrating parts. Yeah. Go on, go on YouTube, watch it, go on. Uh, a Twitch channel, watch, ask questions on the YouTube, ask ask questions on Twitch, um, go on the subreddit, ask questions on the subreddit. People are actually, uh, it, for the most part, people are pretty friendly, will we'll answer your questions on, on sub or Twitch or YouTube or something. Um, and then if you get in the game and you find you are enjoying it, but don't have, you know, a ton of people playing with you, uh, for sure, try to sail around and see if you can find some companies that are recruiting. And, and once you get into a company, uh, most of them are pretty helpful because you know you're in their company, they're in yours, your allies, you're kind of working together. So they're yeah, they your success is their possible. success, exactly, yeah. exactly. Or go to twitch.tv slash snuffus89 and ask him. Oh yeah, yeah. I gotta I gotta see if I can actually stream this game. My my, my rig has trouble actually playing it off stream. So oh, I bet. Yeah, yeah. The, the game is very uh, intensive. I, I recently got a new graphics card, and I'm not gonna lie. Half the reason I wanted to play it that day that I tried tried it out for the third time uh-huh. was just to see what it looked like with the new graphics card. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and it helped actually. And it's the the worst part about it, uh, streaming streaming on Atlas is so I can be on a server, I can be in my island on a server, and everything's running fine. And then the instance of my island and everything on my island, everybody on it, all the animals and everything, switches to a different server, and it runs like a piece of shit. <laughs> it's the, it's the oddest thing, and I don't I don't understand it. But I can I can be on on my island or Freeport or anything. Sixty FPS, you know, everything's running smooth. There's no no screen tearing, no lag, no nothing. And then you can there's like a little hiccup, and you can tell it switch servers, and I'm getting like four frames per second, and everything's lagging around. And I'm just like, <laughs> what the hell happened? Come on. So I have an RTX twenty eighty. With, I've got 32 gigs of RAM and I've got a, a really nice i7 unlocked overclocked P- CPU. And I get at 1080p while I'm streaming, I get 40 frames per second when I'm at a free port where there's lots of people and structures. Mm-hmm. When I'm out, when I'm away from civilization, I get 60 locked. No problem. That's but, good. And that's with streaming. Yeah. Um, on one, I have a one PC setup. A lot of people have two PC setups now and I'm like, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> that's a bit too much. But, yeah. So. My, I, what I want to say about go ahead, buddy. I was going to say my mind. I'm running a a, a 1066 gig a Ryzen three 
with uh, 16 gigs of RAM. And off stream, it runs. It usually runs fine. I usually get a solid 60 off stream. I haven't tried to stream it. I think I tried to stream it the first day and it didn't really work. Um, yeah. So well, that was a few patches ago, right? Yeah, yeah. So I really need to uh, need to see if I can stream it because it's a it's an it's a fun game, and you know if me streaming it helps one person actually understand the game better and <laughs> you know get them back interested into it, I'll, I could do it. You're such a humanitarian. Man. I am. I am. Plus, <laughs> plus, this is the only game I've I've played. Man, I haven't wanted to play any game. Like when it's it's gotten really bad. Like when I'm not playing it, all I'm thinking about is playing it. Yeah, you've, I've saw, I've been, uh, like on Discord. I was like, Snuffus is playing Atlas. I'm like, is, was that yesterday? You played all that all day. But. <laughs> yeah, so let's do some closing thoughts on yeah. Atlas before we get out of here. I, I, I want to kind of summarize what I've said this whole time is that Atlas is a game that if you, if you, because it's in early access, it doesn't, it doesn't have a lot of polished edges. There's, there's a really interesting and compelling gameplay loop in there. However, there's a big pill you got to swallow to get into it. Um, and that we've given you some ideas with like the YouTube channels or the, or the subreddits or whatnot for ways to kind of like get around some of the frustrating parts and maybe not have to go through the same pain a lot of us did on launch day. Um, I'm not going to recommend it to people right now. If, if you're out there and you got, I think it's $25, $30 on Steam for yeah, early access. Yep. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that, oh, if, if you don't know about it right now and you're listening to this podcast and you're like, mm, is it for me? Is it not? I'm going to say do a lot of research before you put any money down. I would not recommend it to people yet, but I'm, I would keep an eye on it because I think there is a game in here to be had when it comes out of early access that I think might be compelling for a lot of people. I, I think if, if I was going to recommend it to anybody, I would preface it up with, did you like Ark or did you play Ark? <laughs> Because right. if you liked Ark and you played Ark, then you'll probably like Atlas. Because like Atlas, Ark went through a lot of the same stuff early on that Atlas is going through. Um, but yeah, just just giving it to somebody who's who's never played Ark or doesn't know a lot about Great Shop or Atlas, you know, I would say wait maybe probably two to three months. Um, because I would say ninety percent of the bugs that we're seeing now will be worked out. Um, with the amount of patches that they put out, with the quickness they put out these patches, you know, I'm I'm pretty confident that most of the normal bugs you see will probably be worked out, you know, in the next two to three months. Well, there you go, guys. A uh, full throated, eh, maybe <laughs> for <laughs> for Atlas, aka Arc 2.0. Arc 2.0, yeah. Arc <laughs> Arc with some uh, pirate themes on it. <laughs> well, Snuffus, how can people get a hold of you? Uh, you can go on Twitch, where I'm hopefully will be streaming some Atlas at Snuffus89, uh, and you can also uh, find my YouTube Snuffus89. I'm gonna try to put up some more videos of Atlas of of me playing. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter, Bryce S89. I bet you can't guess my birth date or my name. So, you know. I'm going to guess your name is 89 and your birthday is Bryce. <laughs> you nailed it. Perfect. That's, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> and you can find me on uh, Twitter at, at Crunky with two N's underscore Twitch. And you can find me on Twitch TV slash Crunky. Again, what's Crunky with two N's. Uh, stuff is thanks so much for being on here, buddy. You're, you, Absolutely. I was of all the people that we played with, I was like, I got to have Snuffus on the pod because he is going to be the one that has had 5,000 hours in it compared to the rest of us. I've played it a little, not much, <laughs> you know, not much. All right. Well, be, uh, stay tuned for uh, next month's episode when we say it's the worst game ever made. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks again. Bye. See ya.